about that for a minute. Okay. Now I ask you a question. Are you ready to bear your cross? Or are you bearing your cross? You know what? A lot of times people, <clears throat> there's people that go to church every time the doors are open, but they're not bearing their cross. They hear the word of God preached or taught, but they never obey the word of God. They come, they listen, a lot of people do. But you know, faith, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But he said, not only be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer. You know what, how many in here, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many's in here is married? You've got a wife, you've got a spouse, you've got a husband. Some of you are single, you got the big husband. Amen? Let me ask you a question this morning, tonight. Are you committed to God? Ask yourself that question. Am I committed to God? A lot of times we'll do things and say that we're committed, but yet when troubles and trials come upon us, then we fail to be committed to God. Do you think in a marriage, when you're having trouble in a marriage, maybe having disagreements, do you think you just leave your husband or your wife because you had a disagreement? That's not having a commitment. You know what? We need a commitment with God. That we're going to be obedient to the word of God no matter what we go through, no matter how many troubles or trials come upon us, because we have made a commitment to God. And you know what? That's what people like today. Well, I see people, and you look around in the world today, not only in the world, but look around in the church. Look at all the people that's got their start right here in this church. Where are they at tonight? Where are they at tonight? I know a lot of people sick, and I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people that could be here, but chooses not to be here. That's a very poor commitment, isn't it? A commitment is a binding agreement between two parties. And you know what? When you come to God, you, what did you promise God? Did you promise God to serve him, to go all the way with him? Did you sit down first to count the cost to see if you had sufficient funds to run the race that's been set before you? A lot of times people run and they'll run up to the altar one night. They'll say they repented, but you'll never see them no more. A lot of people made a commitment that they had no commitment to the church. You know what? We've got a commitment to this church today. How many's got made a commitment to this church? Huh? Amen. So if we made a commitment to this church, don't you think we ought to be here every time the doors are open? Don't we think, don't you think that we need to serve God in spirit and in truth? And if you've made a commitment with God, and I want you to see this by the help of the Lord. I've seen this article here, and I wrote it down. I'm going to try to read it tonight. And he said, grandparents. They said, we used to attend church six times, six days a week. Revivals, seven nights a week. Think about that. How many can remember that? Parents. We used to attend church Sunday through Wednesday. Revivals at one church us. We used to attend church occasionally on Sunday mornings. Our children. We used to attend church on Mother's Day and Easter. Our grandchildren. What's church? You know, I read that and that really hit home. I thought, my Lord, can't you see the shape that the world is in? is because maybe people have, have failed to teach their own children that they had to come to church. You know what, this is something that people should never have to be told, that we need to be gathered in the house of God. Amen. He wants us to be a sinner. And if I made a commitment with God, I'm gonna be here every chance that I get. Amen. If I'm able to be here, I need to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. If I need to be here, then you need to be here. Amen? Amen? I'm not getting on anybody tonight. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. But can't you see today how the world is getting? People don't even know what church is. I remember up in the hollow years ago, we would have revivals. There would be people on the outside of the windows looking into the windows to see what was going on. What's happened today? 
Don't you think our commitment is lacking to God? Maybe we made a commitment with God, but maybe we let it, maybe we just eased off a bit. Maybe we've laid out a little bit. Never come when we ought to be uncoming. And then we wonder why we go through troubles and why we're weak. Maybe it's because we haven't made a right commitment to God. And you know what? If you make a commitment with God, you're going to forsake all the things that's out there in the world. Amen. We're living in a time today where people want to be entertained. Amen. They want to be entertained when they come to church. They want to be entertained when they're out in the world. It seems like everybody wants to be entertained. But you know what? The Bible says that God is the Spirit. And those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You know what? There's people today going up and down this road every day. And they see this sign upon the church. But they never come here. A lot of people know what this church stands for. I know a lot of people have seen things, but they've never ever stepped foot in this church. But they hear people talk. They'll say, well, them people down there, they don't believe in the holidays. But yet I can go to church and be entertained. I've seen people in a lot of so-called true churches, people that baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, believe in speaking in tongues, but yet they've got to be entertained. I've got nothing wrong with people having fun, but it don't belong in the church. There's people today, they'll try to give you a gift card from Walmart to get you to come to church. They'll have a raffle for bicycles for kids to get them to come to church. But what's wrong with bringing them to church and teaching them about Jesus? What's wrong with coming to church and learning about Jesus? That means me and you. You know what? Every one of us, that's the reason that we come to church is to learn of Him. But today it's got to the point where people don't even want to come to the house of God. They see so much things that's happened in the past and a lot of you, even your, some people in your own family would never step foot in this church because they've seen things happen. They've seen people do things. They've heard people say things, but they don't know them for themselves. They'll take care say, rather than what a true child of God would say. But listen to me tonight. Go with me just a minute to Matthew chapter 16. And this is what I'm going to talk about tonight. Are you ready to take up your cross and follow me? I want to ask you that. I want to ask you that question tonight. You ask yourself that question. Am I ready to take up my cross and follow him? Now, Jesus didn't tell me to follow after denomination or organization. Jesus told me to follow him. You know what? If you follow Jesus and if you're following after the word of God, then you're not going to be deceived. But if you're following in games and want to be entertained, then you're not following after God. And if you made a commitment to God to hop here and hop there, it's not a very good commitment. Because I want you to listen to this. Matthew 16. And I'm going to read 21 through 27. And that from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how, he, how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be healed and raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind thee, Satan. Thou art a fence unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God but those that be of men. You know what? That's what people today want. They want to be men pleasers rather than God pleasers. Right. But you know what? I want to please God. I don't have to, I can't, I don't want to please man. I want to please God. 
Your soul depends upon pleasing God. But you know what? If you're not careful, you can fall into the category that you, you don't have that zeal that you once had. You remember the zeal that you once had? You remember the night that you got saved? The night that God gave you the Holy Ghost? Do you remember that same zeal that you couldn't wait to get back to church again? How many had a zeal for God? Amen. Amen. Did you have a zeal? I'm sure we all did or we should have had. What's happened to that zeal? You still have that same zeal? The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, if you lose your joy, you have no strength. If you're following after man, denominations and organizations, you're not following after God. You're following after man. People will go to church over here because they like the preacher. Maybe not according to what he preaches, but they like him as a person. I can, I can like the per the guy, the man as a person, but if he's not preaching me the truth, I'm not going to follow him. If he's not preaching me the truth, I'm not even going to step a uh, foot in his house. And I'm talking about his church. But we have lost so much of our joy that we're willing to hop here and hop there because of entertainment. Well, you don't understand. They got real good singing down there. This church down the road here, they got real good singing. They got name brand singers. That's following after man, not following after God. Amen? Amen. I love good singing, don't get me wrong. But I want you to know tonight, singing is not going to save you. Nothing in that song is going to save you. The only thing that will save you is the written word of God. It's by being obedient to God and to God's word. And if you want to please God, you obey his word. But yet, people say, I don't believe that. Well, you've got the choice to believe whatever you want to believe. But one day you're going to face God. When it comes down to the end, when you face God, you're going to say, why didn't I listen to that man that was up there that night trying to tell me that I wouldn't listen? How many people just take the word of God and cast it aside because they've never made a commitment to God? When you make a commitment to God, it's a serious thing. How many believe it's a serious thing to make a commitment to God? I don't want to break that commitment. Do you? But what's happened to people today? Can't you see how they drifted back instead of coming forward? They drifted back because they failed to do what God's word says. Now don't get me wrong. I know sometimes there's reasons we can't be here. Maybe you have to work. Maybe you're sick. But God knows it. Wherever you're at tonight under the sound of my voice, and if you're not here, you don't have to hide it from me. You don't have to hide it from your pastor. You know why? Because God sees it. That's right. God sees it. And you can't hide it from God. You can be dancing a little bit in sin, dilly-dallying a little bit in sin, and think my pastor don't see it. Don't make a difference. God sees it. God sees it. And he's the one that I want to please. And I can't please him by going against his word. I made a commitment to God. When I come to church, and I try to come to church all that I can, all that I made, people say, you mean you don't go through trials and troubles? Sure I do. How many goes through trials and troubles? Every day. Does that keep you from coming to the house of God? If you're going through troubles and trials, does that keep you from praying? If you're going through troubles and trials, it should make you want to pray. It should make you want to get closer to God. But a lot of times we can serve God in the good times. Boy, I see people who come to church when they're feeling good, couldn't wait to get there. But as soon as troubles and trials come upon them, they start thinking they can stay home and get their answer at home. You're not going to get your answer by staying at home. If God told us to assemble here tonight, then that's what God's word, it meant that then, it means that today. And I hear people talk about fellowship all the time. I believe in 
fellowship. Amen. That's the reason I come to church an hour early. I try to get here at 6 o'clock. I'm usually the first one here. If I'm not, Sister Debbie is. I'm the first one here. I'm the last one to leave. Amen. I lock the church up. You know why? Because I care for the church. I care for God's people. I try to help God's people. But I can't help people if they don't listen. I can warn them and I can tell them, but I can't help them. People today will say, well, we need to fellowship with one another, yet they don't come in time to even shake hands with one another. Amen. Years ago, people had joy. They would come an hour early. That's the reason, that's how I got my star. That's what I seen. I seen people coming to the house of God early because they wanted fellowship with one another. But today, instead of a fellowship, it's become a battleship. Right. God don't want us fighting amongst one another. God wants us to come together in unity. I love everybody here. If I don't shake your hand, it's not because I wasn't sitting back there. Maybe it was because you didn't get here on time. Amen. Let me ask you a question. You got a doctor's appointment. How many is there on time? Hey man, I am. You got a dentist. If you got a dentist appointment, are you on time? What's more important? Going to the doctor, going to the dentist, or coming to God's house? What's more important? God's house. But why have we neglected God's house? We neglect God's house by not coming to it and listen to what the Word of God says. Let's read on here. This is the one I want you to see. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. What is a disciple? A follower of God, isn't it? How many followers of God do we have? Listen. If any man, that goes for woman too, if any man will come after me, let him, what? Deny, Deny who? Himself. himself. This is the biggest problem that we've got. Yes, it is. This is the biggest problem that we've got. It's myself. It's my flesh. My flesh don't want to come to church. My flesh don't want to get down and pray. My flesh don't want to study. But sometimes you've got to push your flesh through. And you've got to listen to God. If God, don't you think that God wants us all to pray? Amen. Not just when we're going up on the mountain, but when we're down in the valley. Amen. That's when God really wants you to pray. God knows what you're going through. But I see people go through troubles and trials, but yet they say, I can't come to church. I, oh, you don't understand what I'm going through. I can stay home and read my Bible. Well, you can, but you're breaking the commandment of God. Amen. Right. If you're able to be here and you're not here because you're going through a trouble or trial, you're telling me that trouble or trial is bigger than God. You can't break one commandment to try to fit another one. People try to say, well, that, that commandment don't go for me. Hebrews 10, 25 is still much of a commandment today as it was back then. He said, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together in which the manner of some is. Don't you think that people today have just pushed God aside and don't really believe? Maybe the people's got a little bit of doubt in their mind and say, well, are they really a God? How do we say that? How do we do it? By our actions, by the things that we do. We see what God's word says, but we neglect it. We let the devil take it away from us. Well, they're not going to miss me. If you're miss, if you're not here, I guarantee you we miss you. I don't care how big you are, how little you are. God misses you. But can't you see today how people today have never made a commitment? And when they do, after a little bit of while, they begin to walk and they begin to talk with the Lord. But as soon as troubles and trials come, 
it seems like they fade away. They say, I can't make it. I can't do that. Then people were stronger than me. You know what? God's no respect the person. What God gave them people back there today, then, he'll give to you today. If you're willing to pay the price. But you know what you have to do? You've got to deny old self. Have you ever had a headache? A backache? Or any other kind of aches? I'm 70 years old. I have a lot of aches and pains. But it don't keep me from coming to the house of God. Amen. 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 This is something that people need to take heed to. If you made a commitment to God, I'm telling you what, you're walking on dangerous ground if you're letting that commitment go. If you're not being obedient to the word of God, you telling me that you can be disobedient and make it to heaven. That's to what he says. If we deny ourselves, then we're going to surrender ourselves to God. Amen? We're going to be obedient to his word. He said, let him come and have deny himself and take up his cross and follow who? Follow him. So don't you think if God's word says it, that we need to follow him? Go with me to uh, just a minute to uh, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Aren't you glad that you seen the light in the day? Aren't you glad that God shined the light in your pathway? Let's see what he said. For, uh, Matthew chapter 4, I'll start with six, seven, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make thee fishers of men. Follow me. And you know what? When God called them, what did they do? They took down the nets, and they followed after Jesus. Today, we've got so much to, 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 that's out there in the world that people want to follow after that they don't have time for God. But I'll guarantee you one thing. Every one of us in here, everyone under the sound of my voice, you're going to take time to die. Right. And then after death, then the judgment. Yeah. Then when you stand before God, and you cast God off, and you didn't follow after Jesus, and you didn't obey his word, you know what? He's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. People that come to church night after night have never taken up their cross and followed after him. They got a start at one time, but what happened? The Bible said they had a zeal, but not according to knowledge. A lot of people's got a zeal, but not according to knowledge. I remember when I was young, I had a great zeal. Sometimes I did things, I didn't use no wisdom. I remember one time, we was talking up in the floor in my kitchen. And my brother-in-law at that time was there. And he come in and he said something and he asked about it. He asked a question, I think it was, on the Godhead. Well, he's a different denominational preacher. And the only thing I can remember is God brought me up out of the, out of the seat. And I started preaching to him right in the floor in the kitchen. And boy, he kept on telling me, he said, calm down, calm down. But he didn't understand that the power of God was upon me so strong, I couldn't sit down. But I didn't use a lot of wisdom. What I said was true, but how I said it wasn't. And you know what? That happens a lot of times today. We can say things that are true, but a lot of times we don't use no wisdom in what we say. 
We can cut somebody's head off if we're not careful. Amen. You know what? And I'm not trying to hurt anybody tonight. I'm just trying to tell you what the Word of God says. And let's go back here. Go with me to the uh, 25th verse, Matthew 20, 16, 25. Now I want you to listen to this. 16 and 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. How many believe that tonight? Amen. I want to ask you a question. Are you willing to follow Jesus no matter what? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it's going to cost you your family? Are you willing to follow Jesus if you might even lose your job? Are you willing to follow Jesus everywhere that he tells you to go and everything that he tells you to do? Because if we don't do these things, then we haven't taken up our cross and followed after him. Jesus, just like I said a while ago, this was a commandment of God that we assemble out together. This is how we learn. This is the reason why I'm here. I'm here to learn. I'm here to try to help someone. But you know what? It's just like feeding a bunch of sheep. Sheep knows what time feeding time is. But if they're not here, how can you feed them? That's the reason God expects us to be here. And you know what? I don't want to scold anybody tonight. But can't you see a lot of times where we fall short? Where we don't do what God says to do. We say one thing, but we do another. That's the one he says. For what is it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You see, your soul is what you've got to lose tonight. Every one of us. Everyone in here tonight, you've got a soul. And that's what you're going to lose if we're not careful, if we're not doing what God says to do. He said, well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I wonder what people tonight are giving in exchange for their soul. Don't have time to come to church. You don't take time to die. I don't have time to pray. God expects me to be out here making all this money. You're putting your job ahead of God. If you ain't got time to pray, then something's wrong. If you ain't got time to come to church, then you need to be examining yourself. Where do you be in the faith? I know these are hard sayings, but they're true sayings. And you know what? Just like I say, anybody that's out under the sound of my voice, if you can show me wrong and say you don't have to be here, you know what? We've got people in this faith that thinks that they can serve God, able to be here, but yet they stay at home. They dress the part. Some of them even talk the part. I don't care how long you wear your dresses. And you know what? You can have long dresses. That's not going to save you. There's a lot of people that wear long dresses. Says I'm a child of God but never comes to the house of God. Do you think that's going to save them? Somewhere along the line, they've dropped their cross. They quit following after God. They begin to follow after man. Man says, you don't have to go to church. Therefore, people say, well, this preacher down the road says I don't have to come to church. I don't care what that preacher says. What did the big preacher say? Is it in God's word? If God wants to tell us to be here, don't you think I need to be here? What would you do if you come to church and the preacher wasn't there? What would you do? You'd be wondering where that preacher was, wouldn't you? 
That's the same way with the preacher. When he comes to church, he don't see people here. He's wondering what's wrong with the people. You know what I know? A lot of people may get upset over this. And I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. I want to draw closer to God. I've got to carry my cross. I can help you carry your cross too, if you'll let me. But if you never come and hear what the Word of God says, I can't help you. But go on here. Brother John? Yes. We're members of the body. People want to see the body of Christ. The members have to come together to make up the body of Christ. We have to assemble and come together. I met a man and he gave brother, he pretty much said Brother Glenn was a backslider because people wouldn't come to church here no more. Huh. And it's like he said that Brother Glenn's changed. I said, No, he hasn't. No. They said, Well, he had to because people won't come. I said, You think people are serving man or God? That's it. He said, Brother Glenn's not backed up. No. But it, it, body, we're members of the body those members have to come together to make up the body. That's right. That's right. People see the body when we come together. They That's don't it. see the body if we don't come together. That's right. Go with me to 1 John chapter 2. So if God's word says to do something do you think we ought to do it? How many think we should? If God's word says it, should we do it? I can't hear nobody. Yes, sir. Should we do it? Yes, Raise your hands. How many think we should do it? Yes, Amen. So let me ask you a question. Is Hebrews 10 and 25 still there? It ain't went anywhere, has it? All right, let's see what he says here. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And hereby we do know that we know him if, if we keep his commandments. Amen. Is that a commandment of God? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Sure is. Now listen. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a what? Is a liar. Now I didn't say that. God's word said it. Now don't go away and say no, I called you a liar. I'm telling you what God's word says. God said you was, not me. Listen to what he said. And the truth is not in him. Uh-oh. Now that really cuts, don't it? Have you ever been weak in spirit? I have. Yes. Didn't keep me from coming to the house of God. Amen. Because I knew where my strength lied. It lies in him. I knew I wasn't going to get my answer by staying home. I know people that stay at home and say, you don't understand. I stay home and I read my Bible. I don't care. You can read your Bible. God told you to be here. And if God tells you to be here, this is where we ought to be. Can't you see how sly that old devil is? Try to get you to stay home. Try to get you to read the Bible while you're staying home. And try to console you and make you think that you're doing right. But the first thing he said, he said, submit yourself to God. Then resist the devil and he shall flee from you. But how many of us don't submit ourselves to God? We listen to the wrong voice. That old fleshly voice, I'll stay home. You know you're hurting. Boy, you're aching. Your back aches and your legs are aching. You've got a headache. God will understand. But sometimes we need to press through the flesh to get to God. I want you to listen to what Jesus did. He went all the way to the cross. He was spat upon. He was beaten. And yet he never opened up his mouth. He went all the way to Calvary and he shed his blood that you and I could have that chance for eternal life. But if we reject that chance, then there's only one other place that you can go. This is a serious thing tonight, Amen. is to come into the house of God. 
I don't care how many preachers tell you that you don't have to come to church. They're lying to you. Right. Listen, drop on down here to the 14th. He said, I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abides in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. How do you overcome it? By being obedient to the word of God. Now listen to what he says. Love not the world. Amen. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I see people lay out of church to go to the ball game. I see people lay out of church to go boating, go fishing, go hunting, do all these pleasures in the world. Do you think God was in that? Do you think God's going to tell you to stay home on a church night? No. Because I want to go to Cannon Park. I want to do all these worldly things. But I don't have time to come to the house of God. God will understand. No, the devil's lying to you. The devil's lying to you. He's trying to pull you out. He's trying to make you weak. Listen to what he says. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I want to abide. I want to do what God says. I don't care what people say. You know what? You can't go for me. I can't go for you. I'll say one thing right here tonight. I don't care if there's two people here. I'll be here. If I'm able to be here and there's nobody else going to be here, I'll be here. You know what? All the apostles tried to set an example in the, in the Bible, in the Word of God. They were examples to the flock. But sometimes you can try to be an example and people say, well, that fool's down there an hour early. What's he doing down there an hour early? Church don't start at seven. I want to be here. That's why I come an hour early. I come to try to have fellowship with one another. But you can't have it if you're not here. Amen? Amen. Amen. We should make every ounce of strength in our bodies to be here one time. Now I know things come up, but they don't come up every church night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't come up every church night. Did you make a commitment to God or did you make a commitment to man? I made my commitment to God. I said I'll be here every night. It's my duty to help Brother Glenn in any way that I can. No, I'm not the pastor. Don't want to be. Don't claim to be. But I am somebody that's willing to help my pastor. Amen. You should be willing to help your pastor. Amen. How can you help your pastor? By being here, by praying for him. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for one another. But if we're not here, how are you going to pray? You think God's going to hear your prayer when you stay home all the time and don't listen to God? When God tells you to be here, yet we want to be somewhere else? I'll tell everybody that's out under the sound of my voice, you're going to take time to die. You're going to take time to die. And then you're going to face judgment. Then you're going to say, Lord, why didn't I go to church that night? But I had too much stuff to do. Lord, you'll understand. Well, that's between you and God. If you can get by with it, then more power to you. But this word that goes for me is going to face you just like it's going to face me. And I'll say one thing tonight. Children, we all need to draw closer to God. Amen? I want to draw closer to God. I don't know about anybody else. I want to draw closer to God. How many wants to draw closer to God tonight? Can you raise your hands and say, Lord, I want to draw closer 
I know, Lord, I've made mistakes. I know I failed you, Lord, but you never failed me one time. That's the God that we serve. He's never failed you. He'll never fail you. But man will fail you. Man will fail you. And you know what? So many times people put pleasure ahead of God. Ahead of God. People say, well, you take a vacation. Yeah, I'll take a week's vacation. But you know what? I try to schedule my vacation on nights that they're not church too. I might miss one day. But you know what? I don't make a habit of it to continue doing it on the weekends. Because I want to be here. This is where God told me to be. I've got to be here if I want my soul saved. My soul is on the line. Amen. Your soul is on the line. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. Luke 14, 26 and 27. I'm going to read 14 uh, through 33. Luke 14, 26. If any man, and that goes for woman too, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, what did he say? He cannot be my disciple. Now, is that what the Word of God said? People say, you mean you've got to hate your mother or your father or your brother? No, that ain't what he's talking about. You can't put them ahead of God. I see people, they'll get somebody to come to their house, maybe their sister that's out in sin, their brother or somebody else that's out in sin. They'll come to them on church night. People say, well, I can't come to church. I had company. Well, you're putting them ahead of God. You're putting them ahead of God. I remember our old pastor said he'd have company come to his house. And he said, well, it's almost church time. He said, come on and go to church with me. He didn't stay at home because he had company. But how many of us do? You don't have to raise your hand. You know for yourself. But you know what? i got to put God first. I've got to put God first. Even ahead of my own spouse, if she don't want to come, I've got to be here. I've got to love God more than anything. God has got to be first in your life. Ahead of everything. Amen. Everything. Listen. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now is that what the word says? Listen. For which of you intending to build a tower setteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it? Listen. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. And all that behold it begin to mock it. Can't you see that today? People that once got their start, but yet they didn't sit down to count the cost, and then they wind up back out in the world. And then they become people begin to mock and say, he was one of them. He used to do this. He used to do that. But where are they at today? Where are they at today? 431. Or what king going to make war against another king setteth not down first and consulteth whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now go with me to John 6. St. John 6. I'm going to read. Start at 65. Sixty-five through seventy-one.
John chapter 6, verse 65. And he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. I want you to catch that verse. No man can cometh unto me, listen, except it were given unto him of my Father. Now listen to what he says. From that time, many of his disciples or his followers, what happened to them? They went back and walked no more with him. Now he said, except the Spirit calleth them. Don't you think the Spirit doesn't call them a lot of times that they just come on their own? You can't come to God. God's got to draw you first. I've seen people make the mistake. They say, well, I believe I'll go to join church tonight. I've got an option to join church. You don't join a church. You're born into the church. Amen? But people today make excuses and think they can do it any way they want to do it. But listen to what he said. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where do you want to go if you leave God? You can go to another church. You can go to another denomination. But if you leave God, you bless the best thing you ever had. If you fail to do what God says, then you're losing the best thing that you'll ever have in your life. He said, you've handled of it. you tasted of it. And you know that I'm good. So if you know that he's good, why would you want to leave him for something that wouldn't save you? And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil? You mean Jesus chose twelve disciples and one of them was a devil? He sure did, didn't he? You know what? Not a lot of hold him? His eyes. He wanted that silver more than he wanted God. How many people today making that same mistake want that green back more than they want God? I see people who work 16 hours a day in order to hand their kids everything that they want. I remember when I worked in, when I lived in Irwin, Tennessee. I went to the barber one time, and at the school, it seemed like a lot of young kids, all they did was drive brand new cars. I asked that barber, I said, how in the world does these kids down here afford a brand new car? He said, look around. He said, mommy and daddy both working 16 hours a day to hand down to their kids. Don't you think sometimes we can spoil our kids Amen. by giving them too much? The best thing that you can give your child or your grandkid is Jesus Christ. Right. Best thing that you can do is bring them to church. And you know what, mommy and daddy, grandma, grandpa, if you don't want to bring them, then bring them to the church and let them come in. Every one of us need, you know what? I wonder what's going to happen to this next generation. If we aren't careful, we're going to see a whole generation be lost because people fail to take heed to the Word of God. God's Word says it, I believe it. I'm going to do everything in my power to try to do what God says to do. We need to commit ourselves. We need to make a commitment to God and say, Lord, I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go. I'm willing to do, Lord, what you'd have me to do. You know what? If you don't have that joy in your soul tonight, spiritually, you're dead. You're dead. That joy is our strength. You know what we need? We need the true Holy Ghost fire burning up down inside of us to get that fire burning to where we have that zeal and that joy back in our life. Because you know why? That fire will burn everything out that's not like God. That's the reason that we need the Holy Ghost and fire. God is a consuming fire. And I'm glad tonight that I know that I'm serving the one that has all power 
in heaven and earth. I hope nobody gets mad over this tonight. If you get mad, come up to me. I'm not going to reject nobody. I'll talk to anybody. I'll sit down, and the best that I can do, I'll try to explain it to you. But I'm not going to go what I think. I'm going to go what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. This is the final say. Not what I say, but what this says. This is our answer. You need an answer tonight? God's got it right here. I mean, love the Lord tonight. Amen. Give me a big hand.